In this video, we're going to look at the intersection of three planes where they intersect in a single point. So, first I'll read the equations. The first is 2x plus y plus 6z minus 7 equals 0. Let's call that equation 1. The second is 3x plus 4y plus 3z plus 8 equals 0. We'll call that equation 2. And finally, x minus 2y minus 4z minus 9 equals 0. We'll call that equation 3. Okay. First things first, check the normal vectors. I want to see what the normal vectors are. See if they're multiples of each other. That'll tell us that the planes are parallel. So their normal vectors are 2, 1, 6, 3, 4, 3, and 1, negative 2, negative 4. So notice that they're not multiples of each other. 2 to get to 3, you'd be timesing by 1.5, but 1 times 1.5 is not 4. To get from 2 to 1, you divide by 2, but 1 divided by 2 is not negative 2, so these are not, that's not parallel, that's not parallel. Finally, these last two are not parallel. To get from 3 to 1, you'd be dividing by 3, but the 4 divided by 3 is not negative 2, so none of them are multiples of each other, which tells us they're, therefore the planes aren't parallel. Or none of them are. We could say, even more specifically, no plane is parallel to each other of this system of planes. So now I want to check if the normal vectors themselves are coplanar. That is, check if n1 cross n2, the cross product of this, dotted with n3, equals 0. We want to see if those cross product, this is actually called the triple scalar product, the cross product then dot product, it's triple scalar product. If it equals 0, then we have something different. We're hoping it won't be 0 because then it intersects at a point. If you want to see what happens when it does equal 0, you'll have to watch a different video. This one's where it meets at a single point. You'll see. So let's check. i got to do the cross product of n1 and 2. I better do that somewhere. So let's first set it up. i got to write n1 out twice. This is how you do cross product. If you don't know how to do cross product, please watch the video on cross product. I'm going to write out n2 and you cross out these sides and do this fish situation. n1 cross n2 is equal to this times this minus that times that. So this is 1 times 3 minus, oh, I need a bracket here, 1 times 3 minus 6 times 4, that's 3 minus 24. And then 6 times 3 minus 2 times 3, so that's 18 minus 6. And finally, 2 times 4 minus, that's 8, minus 1 times 3, that's 3. So I get the cross product is negative 21, 12, 5. Okay? Not quite done, though. In fact, I'm a long way from the answer. I want to check now what this is. N1 cross n2 dot with n3. So n1 cross, I'm going to rewrite it up here, show what I'm doing. n3, I'm checking this vector, which was the result of the cross product, dot with n3, see what it is. And hopefully it's not 0, or it won't intersect in a point. So what's n3? 1, negative 2, negative 4. Okay, dot product. So multiply these two together, you get negative 21. Multiply these two together, that's minus 24. Multiply these two together, and you get minus 20. Oh, good. It is clearly not 0. You don't even have to write the number. Just write, hey, it's not 0, which is good. Therefore, that tells us, since we know they're not parallel, and we know their normals, triple scalar product, is not 0, therefore, they intersect at a point. That's how I gave this video its bracketed title here. I knew they'd intersect in a point because ahead of time I knew these normals would not be parallel and their triple scalar product would not equal zero. So they're going to intersect at a point. Okay, so we got to eliminate a variable from both equations. We can choose to eliminate any of the variables. Could eliminate x, and that would probably be pretty easy. But a nice thing here about eliminating y's is they're all nice, even multiples. 
I think I'll choose the Ys just because there's no real good reason and just making up a reason. You could have choose the Xs, you could have chose the Zs. We're going to eliminate the Ys in this video. So first, I'm going to work with equation 1 and 2, then I'm going to work with equation 1 and 3. First, I'm going to eliminate equation 1 and 2. So I want to make 4y, so I need to multiply by 4. So equation 1 times 4, and that'll give me, so multiply by 4, 8x, 4y, and 24z, and don't forget the constant. I made that mistake many times. Minus 28 equals 0. And leave equation 2 alone, and I get 3x there. I'm just rewriting it, really. And I've set it up so that the y's are equal. And now I'm going to subtract. I put the minus in a circle to remind me subtract both, well, all columns, really. Oh, I get 8x minus 3x. And that gives me 5x. The y's, like I planned it, they're eliminated. I get 0y's. 4 take away 4 is 0. 24 take away 3 is positive 21z's. And negative 28 minus 8 gives negative 36. All right, I got an equation here. I need to give it a number so I can refer to it later. Call it equation three. It's just got x's and z's. Okay, now I'm going to eliminate one with three. So how do I make equation one into equation three? I can multiply by negative two to get them the same, or I can multiply by positive two, and instead of subtracting, I'll add them. Here, I'll show you what I mean. I'll do equation one times two. So I'll put a little line here too to separate my work so the reader isn't confused, or in this case, the viewer. So equation one times two gives me four x plus two y plus multiply by two, 12 z. Don't forget to multiply the constant. Sometimes I keep saying it out loud so I don't forget, multiply by two, multiply by two, mul yep. And I'll leave equation three alone because now I've got a coefficient of two and negative two. So this is x minus 2y minus 4z. I'm just leaving it alone. Minus 9 equals 0. And now I eliminate, but this time instead of subtracting, I add. That'll cancel these out. You get 4x plus x gives 5x. And, oh, that's going to be great. 2y and negative 2y when I'm adding, I get 0. 12y plus negative 4, sorry, 12z plus negative 4z it's going to give you 8z, negative 14, plus negative 9 gives you negative 23, and 0 plus 0 is just 0. So this, is, this was equation 3. I'll call this one equation 4 and go up here. I'm in a good spot now, though. I've got these two equations, 3 and 4. And now I want to get rid of either the x's or the z's, and the z's would be a and really annoying to get rid of 21 and 8, you have to multiply 1 by 20. Why bother? Look, you can eliminate the x's real easy just by doing equation 3 minus equation 4. So I'll just rewrite them here. Here's equation 3. You can see them together. 5x plus 21z minus 36 equals 0. And 5x plus 8z minus 23 equals 0. That's equation 4. And to get rid of the x's, I'm going to subtract, put a circle around it so I don't forget, subtract everything. Subtract the x's, they're gone, beautiful. 21 take away 8, that's 13 z's. And 36 minus minus 23 is 36 plus 23, which of course, sorry, negative 36 plus 23 gives, oh, not positive, gives negative 13, nice. Zero take away zero, and I'm so close. Now I just need to solve for z. How do you do that? Well, first add 13 both sides, and you get 13z equals 13. And now z's being times by 13, so get rid of timesing by dividing, and you get z equals 1. Woohoo! We're not done, but we're close. I know that z equals 1 now, so I want to sub it back into an equation that'll let me get another variable which would either be equation 3 or equation 4. I don't want to use 1 and 2 because they also have y's and x's. I want just to solve for x. So equation 3 or 4, which one looks better to you? It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose equation 3. Sub z equals 1 into 
equation 3. So I get 5x plus 21 times 1 minus 36 equals 0. So I'm going to have to write smaller now to get it all in here. 5x, I'm going to do this all at once here. 21 times 1 is just 21. Take away 36, so it's 21 take away 36 is minus 15. So I want to get x by itself. I'm going to add 15 both sides. And I get 5x equals 15. And how do you get x by itself? Divide by what's timesing it. So divide by 5. And x equals 3. But I'm not done. I know x. And I know y. I know z. i got to solve for y. That's my last one. Am I going to have room? It's going to be tight. Sub x equals 3. And z equals 1. Into which equation? Any of them will work. Equation 3 looks like it's got a little bit smaller coefficients. I might use that into equation 3. Let's do it. So 3 minus 2y, though equation 1 would have been a good choice. There's no coefficient on the y. It doesn't matter. Made my choice. I'm sticking with it. Either one is good. So I subbed in 3 for x minus 4 times z. z is 1. And then minus 9 equals 0. And I've just got this y left. I'm going to solve for it. I'm going to put all these like terms together all at once. So I have this minus 2y, and then you have 3 take away 4. 3 take away 4. It's 4 times 1, so it's 3 take away 4. That's negative 1. I mean, I'll write it out. 3 take away 4 is negative 1 minus 9. All right, equals 0. And so I get negative 2y. Minus 10 equals 0. Oh, I'm so close. Let's go up here. Nice arrows for the reader or viewer to follow. A negative 2y minus 10 equals 0. I'm going to add 10 both sides. And I get negative 2y equals 10. Almost there. Just got to divide by what's in front of y. What's in front of y is a negative 2, so divide both sides. And I've got it. y equals negative 5. And I'm going to squeeze in my final answer in the column here, as my final answer is a point made up of this z, this x, and this y. Therefore, the point of intersection is, you can write it as a point coordinate, x, y, z, 3, negative 5, 1. I'm done. Whew, let's look.